at least give it a day or two, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but I don't want to talk to you about energy prices because something else crossed my radar. I became aware that Russell Brand, some would argue the leader of our profession, Russell Brand, <laughs> has appeared on Newsnight, interviewed by Jeremy Paxman, and uh, this interview went viral on YouTube, over eight million clicks and counting. Eight million, presumably young people linked to it from Facebook or whatever, perhaps unfamiliar with a news format program before their first introduction to current affairs. Very exciting for many people. <laughs> It's bizarre, actually, watching the whole thing, given the fact that Russell Brand is famously named after two things that you can do to cattle. <laughs> it is... It is odd. It is odd that Paxman fails to do the third most enjoyable thing you can do to cattle, which is to grill them. It is... <laughs> that's the weakest interview I've ever seen. It, be, it was bizarre. I don't know if you... Did you, many of you watch it? Yeah, you've seen it. It takes place in Russell Brand's hotel room, which is humiliating for Paxman to begin with. He normally is comfortable in a studio with a swivel chair and a desk and some files. Instead, he's sitting there in an easy chair, which he doesn't really know how to recline in. <laughs> Paxman, at one point, appears to be wondering why his sleeve has stuck to the chair. It's an embarrassing <laughs> and humiliating situation for him. And he responds badly. He cowers in his chair while Brand gesticulates at him. And he tries, Paxman, to use language which he thinks will win over the younger vote. He says at one point, isn't it the case that you just can't be asked to vote? Thinking that using the word asked in that context will win over young minds. In reality, of course, young minds are won over by the way Russell Brand speaks, which is in fact like a 19th century fairground barker. <laughs> oh, I could be asked to vote, Jeremy, my love. It's not that I lack the industrial application to engage with the electoral manifestation of my statue, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the point is, he is let off the hook on everything. His core point, his great manifesto is that there's no point in voting because that doesn't change anything. What we need is a revolution. And more to the point, he can see it happening. He believes we are on the verge of revolution. Let me say this one thing clearly. If you take nothing else away from what I have to say this evening, remember this and understand it. There has never been a generation of people in any country in the world ever in the history of mankind less close to revolution than the British people are right now. a more successful, comfortable and comprehensive program of anaesthetization of an entire population. We have our smartphones, we have our 42-inch plasma screens, we have Premiership, we have X Factor, we have Strictly. We have no interest whatsoever. We can't even get off our asses to turn the TV over, <laughs> let alone overthrow the state. It's ridiculous. Revolutions take work and sacrifice, or at least a bit of mild discomfort. We have no stomach for it whatsoever. The people are comfortable, they're reasonably well off, and best of all, the work of absolute genius, the poor are fat. <laughs> the poorer you are, the fatter you are. It's an absolute stroke of genius. Whoever came up with that, at least in the old days, the downtrodden, the miserable dregs of society who were discarded by their leaders were hungry. <laughs> they were lean, they felt a grumbling, gnawing sensation in their guts that eventually drove them to the barricades. That is not going to happen now. <laughs> but my favourite, my absolute favourite moment of the whole thing was the bit at which Jeremy Paxman says, so if there were to be a revolution and we did overthrow the state, what would you put in its place? At which point Russell said, I don't know, Jeremy, I'm just a comedian. <laughs> well, I'm just a comedian too, OK? But if I'm walking down the road and somebody says, excuse me, mate, my car won't start, can you give us a hand? I don't go over, flip the bonnet open, rip out the battery, short the leads, remove the distributor cap, open the petrol tank and piss in the tank. And they go, I'm sorry, mate, I'm just a comedian. I politely decline. I'm just a comedian. Goes first before you fuck up the entire thing you've come to say. That's all from me. I've been Simon Evans. Thank you very much. Take care. Good night.